All right, we got ourselves a new episode of One Piece out, episode 1093. And it has provided us with a moment in One Piece that we have all been waiting for, if you catch my drift. Uh -huh. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, that's right. The fight between Cracker, Kuzon, and Van Auger. Oh my god, I didn't know I wanted that so bad, but I did. It was a pretty cool scene, right? Cracker tried his best. He really fought valiantly, ladies and gentlemen. Van Auger was no scoping up there. If you go back and watch the footage, I didn't even notice this the first time. Aokiji, or I should say Kuzon, literally beats Cracker with a single finger. He just like moves his finger like this, and then the ice just takes over Cracker's body, and he just goes down. And my god, that was a cool scene right um and it was a part of a cover series so that means they're adapting the cover series in the anime so i'm just blown away by this i hope we get to see a lot more of that in the future of the one piece anime um oh yeah we also saw female law and uh more importantly female beppo so just yeah female beppo everybody uh hashtag not a furry but you know it's female beppo also i just love like the cartoonishness of Beppo turning into a lady and then he just gets like a Karen wig on his head and <laughs> you know He's like a polar bear. So like the implication is like a, a female polar bear would just have like a blonde wig And like that's the only difference. I loved um, also Ikaku who is the only female member of the heart pirates normally and She's in the background as all of the crew are being affected by Doc Q's uh, sick sick fruit and uh, she's just in the background like ah. I mean, like, this is not great, but, you know, this is fine for me. I'm cool with this, yes. <laughs> you know, because she's the only lady normally. So, it was a really great episode. It was a lot of interesting stuff there. So, we're gonna, we're gonna kind of focus on... We're not gonna go, like, play-by-play -play in the episode. I'm more of just gonna talk about Blackbeard's crew in general and their, their general power level and things like that. And, in fact, I actually am going to start off with that filler scene because, I mean, it was a filler scene because we never saw the fight between Cracker, Kuzon, and Van Auger in the manga, um, but let, let's back up a little bit here, because I'm watching the episode, right, and it wasn't until, like, we got to the moment when the Heart Pirates are bombarding uh, Blackbeard's ship, and then there's the scene with Pudding, and then I had a realization of, like, well, wait a minute, because the whole point of, like, why Pudding is there is only explained in the cover series, the Germa's, you know, emotionless excursion, right? So then I'm like, well, hold on. Are they just going to show Pudding being captured by the Blackbeard Pirates with no context? Because that would be very confusing. And then they actually showed the scene, and I'm like, oh, cool, all right. And they actually added some stuff to it beyond just the fight scene, okay? So uh, in the context of the cover series, to give you something that going up to it, so uh, Yonji and Niji were captured at... Cacao Island, you know, so remember the scene where, like, the Straw Hats get away, Luffy escapes, Jinbei stays behind to help out the, uh, the Sun Pirates to fight against Big Mom, uh, the Jerma are also there. So, Judge and Reiju and Ichiji manage to escape along with the Jerma Fortress, it's, it's heavily battle damaged, but they manage to get away. Yonji and Niji are captured, uh, they are taken to Whole Cake Chateau to be experimented upon, uh, by the various members of the Charlotte family, okay? Now, at the same time, two mysterious individuals. Woo! And it was really fun to theorize on who these two individuals were. Uh, I remember, like, uh, there was a theory, like, maybe they were could be, like, Crocodile and Mihawk, like, back. It, it was fun. Um, but, no, it turned out to be Van Auger, uh, captain of the third ship of the Blackbeard Pirates, and Kuzon, former Admiral Aokiji, current captain of the tenth ship of Blackbeard's crew, okay? So they showed up at Cacao Island. Uh, Brule assumed that it was Ichiji and Reiju coming to save their siblings, so she opens up a mirror portal, and Cracker is now fully healed. Remember, Cracker got really, really beat up by Luffy during Whole Cake Island. At the beginning of that arc, Cracker got he got smashed, okay? Um, and so it was also mentioned kind of like Cracker's, like, he's not very good at dealing with pain. That's why he typically hides in his, like, biscuit armor, okay? And so for most of the entire arc, like, after he's defeated by Luffy, we, like, never see Cracker again in Whole Cake Island, which I think was a little bit of a missed opportunity because there's a scene where we see, like, Reiju in the infirmary at Whole Cake. Remember that scene after she gets shot by Pudding? I think it would have been, like, the funniest, like, wily e. Coyote kind of scene 
if we just see Reiju in the infirmary, and then we just cut over to see Cracker in, like, a full-body cast. Like, a full-body, like, cartoon Bugs Bunny cast. And he's, like, sipping, like, juice out of a straw, and he's just like, yep. Yeah really sucks right and then like okay so he's fully healed by this point and so he goes through the mirror portal into cacao island and then that's when he confronts van auger and um uh, kuzan and we see him summon his biscuit soldiers and there's three of them and van auger uses his warp warp power to just like take out his rifle you know 1000 lands is the name of his rifle and he's just boom 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 and just one shotting these uh biscuit like soldiers that cracker can create i want to remind everybody here about this a little bit okay these things gave luffy some trouble back at Whole Cake Island, because remember, when Luffy went up against Cracker, he was going up against just one of these Biscuit soldiers to begin with. And so Luffy opened up the fight by using elephant guns. So gear third, armament hockey, and the, the Biscuit soldier was able to resist that. I mean, it wasn't like he just like bounced it away like it was nothing. He took out a shield, and it was kind of like a like a little bit of effort had to be exerted, but he was able to resist uh, Elephant Gun. And then I think Luffy uses Hawk Gatling, so Gear Second, Armament Hockey, Gatling, that also doesn't put a dent in them. And so Luffy finally has had enough of this, and he's like, okay, screw this. He just goes Gear Fourth, and then Kong Gun, and that finally breaks one of the, uh, the Biscuit Golems, as it were, and then Cracker's real body, like, emerges from it. But just the fact is, and I know it's anime, but, like, it, it, I, I like to think that's is how it went down like van auger is like you know the blackbeard pirates are like one of the final stages of this series so van auger having some crazy sea prism hockeyed up bullets in his gun like that makes sense to me and he's just boom just one shotting knocking down these golems and so that's not much of an effort there for him later on in the episode we actually see him at another point uh during the present shooting uh, uh jean bart because there's the scene where that was in the manga where, um, you know, they're all on the island and then Beppo is like, oh, Captain, you know, or Jean Bart, there's a sniper at three o'clock, protect the captain. And then Jean Bart like, okay, and he's like big buff guy and he jumps in and Augur takes a shot and boom, it just hits Jean Bart like right in the stomach and the bullet doesn't even pierce him. I mean, Jean Bart is like a little bit like, Ugh, okay, that's going to sting tomorrow, but like, that's the idea here, okay? Don't think of Law's crew as very weak. Um, out of all of them, I would probably say the strongest members would be obviously Law, followed by Beppo, and then probably Jean Bart as, like, the third strongest. Um, might even be stronger than Beppo without Sulong. Like, Beppo Sulong would be probably objectively, like, the strongest in terms of physical strength. But Jean Bart is up there, too, and he's got pretty good hockey if he's able to block a shot from Van Auger, Okay. So that was a cool scene there. And then you have a moment where Kuzon and the animation here, I mean, he looks like a serial killer in, a, in an 80s slasher film. I mean, look at this guy. It's just like, ooh. And just the one finger just freezes Cracker. And look at poor Cracker's face here. He's just like, oh, no. <laughs> I am out of my depth here. Uh, hey, uh, can I call Oven? Wait, can we, wait, wait, time out. Time out, Akuzan. Can I go get my brother? His name's Oven, and he has the power of the Netsu Netsu no me, and he's like a high heat human. He would actually be better to fight you. I I'll be right back. <laughs> you know, like Cracker goes into the mirror portal, gets some back up comes up with kata curry and oven because they are there too they show up later in the cover series uh they they start tripping balls by caesar's hallucination gas and that's how the germ are able to escape um but they are there actually okay oven versus Ka uh, oven kata curry and cracker going up against kuzan now that would be a fight that would be cool all right i don't think like obviously you know kuzan was able to fight against a kainu for like 10 days although to be fair a kainu did win that fight so who knows i i, I think he he would be able to beat Oven, especially... Oh, dude, that would actually be a really cool scene because you could have a moment where Oven shows up using his Netsu Netsu powers and, like, being super confident, like, your power's ice, my power's heat, I'm obviously gonna win. And maybe there's a moment or two where Oven is, like, kind of on the offensive and he's sort of winning, and then all of a sudden Kuzan is just like, you idiot, I fought against a magma human for ten days, I know exactly how to fight high heat humans. And then, boom, he just, like, one shot shots oven and he goes down and then cracker's like oh no and then cracker gets defeated anyway um 
Kuzan versus Kata Curry would be a fun fight, but honestly, I would say Kuzan would still win because his power is just so good at neutralizing so many abilities, okay? Like, he could just, like, you know, Kata Curry rolls up, he uses his peerless donuts, and then Kata Curry just freezes the donuts, freezes all the mochi, and it's just like, okay, time for some mochi ice cream. Did you ever have mochi ice cream? It's actually very good, right? So anyway, um, that doesn't happen, though. Oven and Kata Curry don't show up for backup. It's just Kuzan there wiping the floor with Cracker very quickly. In fact, I would even say it was chilling. Okay, that was, that was a bad one, so I'm going to give you a second to recover from that. I'm going to have a drink. Ah, refreshing water. Straight from the deer. It's not a sponsorship or anything. I just really like this water. Um, okay, so that was that scene. Pretty cool scene. And it also helps set up stuff that's going to be happening later in the anime. Because we're going to be bouncing around a lot in Egghead. And this is one of the first places we go. But we're also going to see what's up with Elbath and, and Kid. And then we're also going to go to uh, Hachinosu to see what's happening with Sword and, you know, Kobe and Garp and everybody. And Kuzan's going to be there. So it's actually a very smart idea from the anime's perspective to, like, showcase Kuzan here and how strong he is. And, like, his kind of stoic expression, like, why is Kuzan working for the Blackbeard Pirates? Why is he there? What's he doing? What's his ultimate goal? And that's going to set up a lot of cool stuff for, you know, when we get to Hachinosu, okay? Something else that was added in the anime that I'm not sure everybody really got... Um, but if you go and look at the manga, so the scene with Pudding, right? Pudding is in the brig. She's in the brig, matey! She's in the brig in Blackbeard's ship. I don't know, by the way, if this is Blackbeard's flagship, the Saber of Zebek. Because Blackbeard has a bunch of ships, and they all kind of look the same. Um, there's obviously the ten ships that are captained by the ten Titanic captains. But then there's also the flagship, which is called the Saber of Zebek, which is connected to Roxy Zebek. We just don't know if this is the one, but Blackbeard's there, so it, it might very well be. But then we also have Burgess and Augur and Doc Hugh that are also captains, so... So, you know, that might be one of their ships as well. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, Pudding is in the brig. And in the manga, the only thing that she says, she only has one line of dialogue. And it's, you know, Mama's going to make you eat those words if she's still alive. Or, you know, Mama's going to make you pay. I know she's still alive. You know, like one of those variations of that. That's all she says in the manga, okay? The anime gives Pudding a couple more lines. Uh, actually two that are very important. The first line is she says, I know why you guys captured me. And the narrator even kind of says this. The narrator, because it's a cover series, we originally see this, okay? So it was like the narrator comes on and says, their objective, Kuzan and Van Auger's objective at Whole Cake Island, not Whole Cake, but at Totland, was to specifically capture Pudding. That was their main objective. We assumed it was, but the narrator just flat out says it. Like, no, you guys say ha ha ha. You guys go to Big Mom's territory, and you bring back that one uh, child of hers that is a third eye member, you know. Say ha ha ha. So that was, like, specifically their job, okay? And so they did that. So Pudding says... I know why you guys captured me. And the second line she has, also important, she says, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do what you want me to do, you know, wh why you captured me, okay? And that's reading the Poneglyphs, is the idea. I mean, they don't directly say that, but it, it is an interesting, nice little context we get added that's like, Pudding's like, okay, I know you captured me because I apparently have the potential to read Poneglyphs. Um, I'm not going to help you, though. I'm not going to help you find the One Piece or decipher the Poneglyphs or locate Laugh Tale. Um, now, I don't know whether that's because, well, for a number of reasons. I don't know if that's just because Pudding is typically against the idea of being kidnapped against her will and forced to do something. So she's probably like, yeah, screw you guys. I'm not helping you. Or number two, it's like, I'm going to help Big Mom, like Mama. Like, even though Big Mom treated Pudding like crap for most of her life, uh, you know, maybe she's still loyal to her in the same way that, like, Kata Curry is still helping out. You know, Kata Curry... All of his siblings, once they find out that his... Well, most of his siblings, once they find out that his, his mouth looked like that, they laughed at him and ridiculed him, even though he was, like, the coolest big brother ever. And then all of them are like, Ha! He's got a weird mouth! That guy that we admired for years! Can you believe it? A weird eel!
eel mouth. My God, what an idiot. You know, even then you'd think Kata Curry would just be like, huh. but you know, it's family. You can pick your friends, but you can't pick your family. But you can pick your nose. Not sure where I was going with this, but the point is, Kata Curry and Pudding, they should probably just get out of the Big Mom family and just go off and start a bakery somewhere. Okay, that one is actually apt, okay? Pudding would make a fabulous bakery. Kata Curry would as well, okay? Another option is that Pudding might still not be able to decipher Poninglyphs because that was a whole thing. She's only a half member of the uh, uh, Third Eye tribe because I, I know, despite her appearance, Big Mom, though, was in fact human. All right, so she was human, and then she got it on with a member of the Third Eye tribe who was Pudding's father. We have no idea who that person is. We have, we have not seen any other, you know, true members of the Third Eye tribe. But it was mentioned that once their power awakens, they're able to, like, access the voice of all things or read or decipher any script around them or anything like that. And then that's, like, Poding's true ability, right? So, obviously, that's the main reason why they've captured her because, you know, uh, Blackbeard was going to need somebody to read the Poneglyphs, okay? So, um, who else do we got? Well, we got Doc Q. And we got Stronger, who is his trusty horse companion. Uh, by the way, kind of a same deal with, like, Hattori the Pigeon that I made a video about a couple days ago. So do you think Stronger is... I, I mean, like, the idea is when we first meet Stronger, he's just a horse. He's just a regular, sickly-looking horse. And now he's a horse that has the horse, horse, fruit model Pegasus. And so he can fly, right? So the question is... Did he always have that fruit? Because maybe he was a horse all the time that ate the horse horse fruit, so now he could just grow wings and that's the only difference. Or is he a human that had the fruit and maybe he had the fruit as far back as like Jaya? And maybe he had the ability to just hide his wings, so maybe we didn't know. Uh, but I think, I think Stronger's just a horse that ate a horse fruit. Uh, seems like a little bit of a waste to me, but, uh, you know, maybe that's the fruit they found, and there's like, oh, it's a Pegasus zone, we'll give it to Stronger, he's a horse after all, it's like, alright, and then all that happened was he grew wings, it's like, okay, uh, we have him, we have Docu, who has the power of the sick, sick fruit, uh, the, um, the, uh, disease that he uses, uh, in the, uh, I remember in one of the translations, or I think in the official, in the official Viz even, they called it the, um, the, uh, malady or malady disease, which I really, it's a pun, because it's like malady or malady, and it's like, okay, it, it flips your sex. Uh, which, by the way, I guess since we see Ikaku in this episode, um, it is confirmed that it, if you're biologically male, it turns you into biologically female. But if you're biologically female, it doesn't turn you into biologically male. It's like not the same thing, because Ikaku did not change sex. All right, so I find that interesting, because that was a question I had when I first saw, like, the chapter of just, like, does it, is it just, you know, men to women? And that is the case. So, um, but that was just just like a disease that he used to kind of just like mess with them or like disorient uh, disorientate them. It wasn't something like you got the idea that like the sick sick fruit can really mess you up. And it's it mentioned by the way that Doc Q he had the highest bounty out of all of the original members of Blackbeard's crew. Like Blackbeard originally had no bounty. Burgess's was like in the twenty million range. Augers was in the thirty million range. Uh, Lafitte's was I think also around the thirties. It wasn't super high. Uh, although Lafitte was a peace officer in the West that turned into like a killer. So, you know, there's that. And then, but Doc Q had the highest out of all of the original. It was like 70 something million, which was pretty high. Okay. And so he probably had the sick, sick fruit for a very long time. And on top of that, and able to inflict disease on anybody around him. You think of all the horrible diseases that exist that he could use with that fruit. He's also got a bunch of apple bombs that he just throws around as his, his main weapon, right? So we have that. Uh, we have Burgess, uh, Jesus Burgess, uh, ooh wee, and he has the strong, strong fruit, which it took like over a thousand episodes and over a thousand chapters to finally get to the point in One Piece where the super strength fruit is a thing, which I kind of have to commend Oda for that. You know, all the other devil fruit ideas, you think like this fruit gives you super strength. That would be like one of the first ones that were ever revealed. But no, he's like, nah, that's too boring. That's too basic. We'll wait until way later to reveal that, okay? But, you know, for Burgess, he's a simple man. Uh, he doesn't need a very complicated devil fruit. So you got just, like, the strength strength fruit. He was already strong. Now he's like, you know, Hulk 
Hulk level strong. He could just lift up a mountain and just chuck the damn thing, right? He's also got a cool new iron mask, which I like to think that's because Sabo messed up his face, uh, whether it be at Dressrosa when he used the Dragon Claw on him or when he got to Baltigo, maybe he fought the revolutionaries again and Sabo, like, you know, just, you know, used his fire powers and burned off half of Burgess's face. They had to replace it with a metal, uh, you know, uh, mask or something like that. I, I, I could see that definitely. Augur has the Warp Warp Fruit. We've seen the effects for that, like, because in the manga, it's literally just like, boop, boop, and he could just, like, you know, warp around the battlefield. Uh, now we can see it. it's very much like the super speed effect or, like, instant transmission from Dragon Ball Z, where, you know, Goku just, you know, instant transmission, shoop, shoop, and that, that's kind of like the Warp Warp Fruit. Um, I'm thinking it's not as, uh, uh, you know, the, the range is not quite as much as instant transmission, <laughs> Because that would be pretty broken. Uh, you know, Augur has to lock onto a, a hockey signature somewhere in the world. And then he could warp there. Um, might have to be somewhere he could see. Or at least in the general area. Like in a one mile, two mile radius. Or whatever kilometer radius he can warp to. Could be something like that. But damn, he's he's pretty powerful, and uh, it's it's a good way of setting up exactly what the Straw Hats are going to have to face off against as, like, their final opponents, you know, because obviously, I mean, like, maybe not final, final opponents, because Shanks might show up, um, you know, that might be, like, the final battle the Straw Hats have, but, like, in terms of the final, like, fight to the death kind of fight... That's going to be against the Blackbeard Pirates, okay? And so we really need to start establishing how strong these characters are now. Um, I would really like Jinbei to fight Burgess. Uh, that would actually be a really cool fight now, because Burgess is just absurd levels of strength. And then you have Jinbei, who's also very strong, but has also mastered, like, disciplines of karate and, you know, uh, Fishman uh, Jujutsu, Jujitsu, whichever one is not the magic one. Uh, judo and stuff like that. Because, dude, like, I'm not a judo expert or anything like that, but the idea, I think, behind judo, right, is, like, it really doesn't matter how strong your opponent is, because once you get them into a certain lock or a certain hold, they really can't do much. Wait, this might be from Madaka Box, I think. I'm, I'm, I have some information on judo judo in here somewhere you ever do that you ever just like scroll through the the old mental rolodex and be like wait a minute all right what what information do i have on judo in here i found something i think it's from an anime i think it's from madaka box okay we'll go with that but anyway point is jinbei like you know martial arts disciplines against burgess who's just i'm strong you know that would be really cool that would be a cool fight there usopp against auger that's a given uh chopper against doc q that's a given blackbeard obviously against luffy it was cool to see law using real room and then you know using the remote room and then slicing a horse in half <laughs> uh, and then piercing blackbeard and then the way the episode ended was really cool uh where they he just uses the black vortex and then the darkness kind of encroaches and laws like oh shit and then just whoa, boom to be continued so that's where the episode ends and then the next episode is going back to egghead because the way that oda breaks these up in the chapters is is much more like not jarring but like it was half of the chapter focused on Blackbeard and then half of the chapter going back to Egghead and then we stay at Egghead for a little while and then a few chapters later we're going to find out more about like, oh, what happened back at Wiener Island when Blackbeard fought Law, you know? So we're going to be switching back and forth a lot here, but we're going back to Egghead in the next chapter, so yeah. But anyway, yeah, really solid episode, really a big fan of everything that they, uh, they added in the anime with the fight with Cracker and the extra dialogue and stuff like that and the ominous shot of uh, Kuzon, so that's it's going to set up stuff for Garp and their interaction later. So, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody. This is Teching 101 signing out. I got an end screen now. Check it out.